Hey guys, can you hear me? Okay. Hey guys, thank you so much for being here for today's session. Our topic today is Salesforce Agile Accelerator and developing on the platform. So I'm Divya Ranjit, and I am an engineer on the Gus team, which builds the Agile Accelerator product. And I also have with me my teammate, Mike McGinty. He's also one of the lead engineers of Agile Accelerator. All right, so let's get started. So first things first, you guys must be tired of this already. But I do have to let you know that we will be showing screenshots and examples of features which are not currently available for our customers. So please only make your purchasing decisions on products and features which are currently available in Salesforce. All right, so let's actually get into our session today. Let's first look at the key takeaways of today's session. I'm sure you're all keen to know what this session is all about. So I'm first going to give you a quick introduction about what is Agile Accelerator and how we ex extended the platform to build it. And then we're going to pick a specific example use case of a specific feature in Agile Accelerator and look into how we customize the platform to build it. And then Mike is going to go into the more interesting aspects of the behind the screen code snippets, screenshots, examples, custom queries of how we actually went about building this custom feature. All right, so moving on. So the first thing is what is Agile Accelerator? So show of hands, how many of you here already use Agile Accelerator? Wow, that's quite a few of you. That's great. So for the rest of you, let me tell you how this whole thing started. So internally at Salesforce, we use a collaboration org called GUS to track our software lifecycle management. And GUS stands for the Grand Unification System. And it's built internally by Salesforce on the Force.com platform. And it's used for agile project management. And by that, what I mean is you could track your sprints. You have a Kanban board in GUS. You could track your backlog. You can manage your backlog. You can track your epics team dependencies, basically everything related to Agile project management. So every year when we used to demo Gus at Dreamforce for our customers, we always had them coming back and asking us that this is awesome. Why is this not available externally for our customers to use? So we listened to our customers, and we took Gus, and we converted that into a managed package, and we deployed that on App Exchange, And that is how Agile Accelerator was born. So the main thing to note about Agile Accelerator is that it's completely free of cost. So anybody could download it, install it, and start using it. So I will provide the link to the App Exchange listing and the success community in my slides. So please do download it, check it out, and let us know how you guys like it. All right, so to build a product like Agile Accelerator, we definitely had to customize a lot of features on the platform to get this whole thing working. So by that, what I mean is we had to build custom lightning components, a lot of Apex code, even Visual Force pages. So now we are going to pick a specific custom feature that we built on Agile Accelerator. And we're going to look into why and how we built it. So the feature that I'm going to pick here today is called Product Tags. So I'm sure those of you who use it must be familiar with it already. But for the rest of you, I'm sure all of you guys use some kind of project management tool in your organizations. Am I right? Like you use some other kind of tool, if not Agile Accelerator. So in your own tools, you would definitely be creating work items. And by work, what I mean is you would be creating user stories or bugs, right? I see nods here. All right, so let's just take an example of a bug. So you are working on something. You just found a defect, so you want to go about creating a bug. So what's the next step in this process? Once you create the bug, you need to assign it to the correct team so that that team can pick it up and start working on that bug. All right, so the issue here with the same scenario at Salesforce is that Salesforce has over 2,000 Scrum teams. So it's going to be very difficult for me to find the exact name of the team and then assign it to the team. Another issue here is that teams also have very different weird and quirky names here at Salesforce. So for example, let's say you found an issue when at mentioning somebody on Chatter. The team which actually owns that feature may not be called as Chatter itself. It could be called something totally different. And the third issue here is that teams work on multiple different products. 
So for example, if you take my own team, which is the Gus team into consideration, we own the sprint wall. We also build the work manager. We also build team dependencies. We also build epics. So we work on several different features and products. So it makes more sense for you to assign that bug to the product which the team works on rather than the team itself. So this is where product tags come into handy. So a product tag is nothing but the tag assigned to the product which the team works on. That's what a product tag is. So let's just take the same example again. So usually in Salesforce, teams usually create product tags for each of the products or the features that they build. So let's, let's just take the same example again. You guys are creating a bug, and you need to assign it to the right team. So let's say you found a bug on the work manager product. So all you have to do is, while creating the bug, you just inside the product tag lookup, you just search for whichever product you got the bug on. So in this case, it was work manager. You just start typing out that word. So now it's going to search on all the teams in Salesforce which has a product called work manager. So in this case, we only have one team, which is the Gus team. So you pick that, and then it's automatically assigned to the right team. All is good. So that is how product tags work. So now that I've given you a context about how this whole thing works, Mike is going to take over, and he's going to explain the behind the screens of how this uh, custom feature actually works. So on to you, Mike. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, before I get started, let's get a quick show of hands. How many people here are developers? All right. And how about developing on the platform, whether it's Apex, Visual Forest, LWC? All right. Great. All right. So I'm going to walk through some code about um, showing how we develop this custom product tag. And um, we're going to kind of walk through the flow. And I'll give you the why and how we built this custom component. All right, so you can see our component. It's a lookup component. And it looks and functions just like a standard lookup component. But you can see what we needed to do was search across multiple objects. So the lightning input field is great. You put it in a record edit form. You give it the, uh, the field name. And it does. you get a lot of stuff for free. It does the platform handles a lot of functionality. But one thing that we need to do was search across multiple objects, whereas with the lightning input field, you know, if you're searching across a single object, then you're set. But if you're going across multiple objects, then you need to go down the custom route. All right, so here you can see when you search in here, you're getting your results back. And here when we're searching on platform dev, you can see the first line that's kind of bolded, that's a product tag name. And you can see the first two results. They came back. They match platform dev. And then the results below that, the product, team, product name did not have platform dev in it, but the team name did. So we want to show all those results. All right. So before we jump into code, let me just show you the flow of how we built this. So when we were building this component, we knew that we'd be using it for not only the product tag, but other custom objects. So what we did was we built a base lookup component. And then that component pushes events up to a parent component. And then it takes data in via attributes. So the base component is pretty simple. It contains a single input element. And when any input is put into that, we get that fires events up to the parent component. And then it displays the results that are pushed back down in. So the parent component, the one we're looking at, product tag, that just listens for events from the base component and then provides the specific Im implementation via you know, a call to Apex controller and then you know, any data filtering that needs to be done. And then it gets that data and pushes it back down to the base controller. And the base controller displays the results from that. All right, so now we're going to dive into some code here. And this is our uh, base lookup component here. And it's got a lot of different attributes for styling and other ways to configure it. But we're going to concentrate on a few things. There's two events that it's going to fire, the lookup search event 
and the uh, lookup option selected, and two attributes that we're going to look at today, the search options, which is the data that comes down into our base component, and the lookup type. And I'll cover the lookup type in a few more slides here. All right, so now we're still in the lookup component, just a little further down. And like I'm, I mentioned earlier, the Lightning input field is great. You get a lot of free stuff. But since we had to go custom, we're just using a standard input element. And for the demo now, we're just going to look at the on input attribute only. And now let's jump into the controller and look at the handle input. So each time a user either cuts and pastes or types into the input field, it's going to fire the on input event. And we're going to handle that. In here, you can see there's some um, debouncing going on because we don't want to be sending calls to the server every time they, a user types a character. We want to wait until, in our case, there's a 400 millisecond um, delay. Then we want to get that whole string and just do one search. So but let's just go through the flow here. And you can see in bolded, first we're going to get the value from our input and set that to an attribute. And then we're going to fire the lookup search. So let's look at our helper. And in the helper, first we're getting the event, lookup search event. Then we get the search term and the lookup type, the two attributes we looked at before. We're going to set those to the parameters and just fire that event. So now base lookup has done its job. It's fired the event. And the parent needs to handle that from here. All right, so now we're in the parent product tag component. And you can see we have the two handlers for the two events that are being fired, the lookup search and the lookup option selected. We're going to handle those, and we have actions for those. We'll look at those in the controller in a minute. And then down below, you can see we have the, our base lookup component, ADM lookup. And then the two attributes we looked at, the search options, that's the data that's going to go back down. And then the lookup type. So I mentioned the lookup type before, but I didn't really go into what that is. So here, we're saying specifically this is a product tag lookup type. And now we'll go into the controller. And you can see in the controller, when the event gets fired back up, we need to know the lookup type. Because if we're using this on other custom objects, the base component's going to be firing. Every time we're doing a search, it's going to be firing these events up. And we don't want one of our other custom objects handling a lookup if we're looking for product tags. So we need to know which instance of the base controller the parent is. So. All right, so now that we know that the lookup type is product tag here, we can uh, get the search term from the event. That was one of the parameters we set. And then right below that, you can see in our callback function, we're basically just going to get the return value and pass that into the search options attribute, which gets passed down to our base controller. And the bottom line, we're just that's where we're calling our Apex method. So let's jump into the Apex method. So here in our Apex method, um, this is pretty simple. We are getting our search term, putting wildcards on the beginning and end so that we can just search for the string anywhere in the product tag name or the team name. And that's the whole reason we needed to first go custom with this, because we had a need to search across those multiple objects. So that just returns our list of product tags back and then that as we looked at, that gets set to the attribute, pushed down. And then this is so this is what that looks like. Put in our string, makes the call, results come back, and there's our results. So, oh, let's go back. And then you can see, as Divya mentioned earlier, once that returns, it assigns all the uh, people on the team and handles all that work. All right, and so then when you select an option, this, we're going to touch on this real quickly. This is back in the base up lookup component. We have the event for the lookup option selected. We're showing a list, and in the on click there, you do the select option, and it takes that same flow. It gets, gets the ID here, 
fires an event, sends that up to the product tag component, and then that sets that in the controller. So. All right. So once you go custom, there's pros and cons to that, of course. So you know some of the cons are, you know, in on the left here is a standard lookup input field. And you get like the recent product tags. You get that stuff for free. And you get all the accessibility. So once you go custom, you have to kind of fill those gaps in. But you also get the advantage of being able to do custom stuff. So instead of recent product tags, which is those only display when you actually visit that record, not if you actually do a lookup and select it. We wanted to have favorite product tags that users could go and configure. And because most of the time, users are using you know, one or two product tags, maybe five or something. But we wanted to go and show them their favorites that they're using all the time instead of you know, a recent product tag that they may have visited. So, so since we went custom, it was easy for us to do that. Here's our product tag component again. And we have a, an attribute on the base component called default options. And so in this instance, instance, we can push favorite product tags data down to the component. And in our product tag controller, you can see in the init, we first see, do we, um, are we going to display favorite product tags? If so, call the helper. And the helper is just calling a get user product tags. And when that returns in our callback function, we're setting that to the attribute, which gets pushed down to our base component. And here in our Apex controller, you can just see what we have is a custom object, which is a junction object between a user and a product tag. And so when they configure theirs, it just put entries in this table, this user ID, this product ID. And so we just do a query, and we're just using user info, get user ID, so that it's only just showing for that logged in user. So, all right. And then, so now when we look back at the base lookup component, you can see on the on focus, when they click into that, then we see are there any default options? If so, then display those. And it displays it in the same, the data has the same structure as the search options. So we display it in there. Then when they start typing in a search string, it replaces those favorite product tags with your search results. All right. So looks like we don't have much time left, yeah. but I'll give it to um, uh, you to wrap up here. Me... OK, just to give you guys a quick recap, we just talked about what is Agile Accelerator and how we built it. And then we picked the example of product tags. And why do we have to actually use product tags at Salesforce? And how did we actually build it? And then Mike spoke further about how we built our own product tag lookup component and how we use that along with a base lookup component. And also, he gave a sneak peek about the favorite product tags feature. So that is it for today's session. So let us know if you guys have any questions. We'll also be there outside. So if you guys have more questions, you can ask us there as well. I think we still have one minute for questions. So. Yes. Oh. Oh, the manual for Agile. X yes, it is going to be updated soon. Yes. The, the ETA for it, I think pretty soon. We're working on it currently. So yeah, we'll post it on the success community. So yeah. Cool. Great. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for we'll being there today. Back.